innovation is the mark of pioneers. Towards the end of the 19th century, the name of one man was to make its mark on the history of the automobile becoming synonymous with trucks. Berlier applied for his first patent. This was also the year during which another pioneer, Louis Renault, created the company Renault Frere. He then designed the first vehicle for transporting goods built on the chassis of a car. 1905, the American locomotive company joined the automobile adventure, buying the manufacturing license for a range of three cars from Marius Berlier. Berlier suddenly found himself in possession of a capital of 500,000 gold francs. He reinvested all his money in buying land, modern machinery, and constructing new buildings to develop his factory. The Berlier brand then adopted the famous steam locomotive sign as its logo. Berlier intensified its truck business at the same time as Renault was continuing to develop its motor car business. Berlier launched the first generation of trucks, the L followed by the M, with a visionary marketing campaign focusing on road travel as an extension of the railways. Despite the outbreak of World War I, Marius Berlier was already planning ahead for the next 20 years. At his 400 hectare site, he installed the first transformation machining and assembly line workshops. Like Renault, Berlier was actively involved in the war effort, manufacturing the weapon which led to the final victory. In 1916, Berlier factories were producing 40 CBA trucks a day, 2,500 of which were used at the front. Transporting troops and equipment, medical units and supplies on the roads of Verdun, they soon became known as indestructible. After the war, the expansion of trucks as a method of transport came up against the wishes of one man. Raoul Daltry, director of the French State Railways, had plans to construct a trans-Saharan railway line in order to establish the superiority of rail. Berlier and Renault both took up the challenge. In 1926, they crossed the Sahara in six-wheeled vehicles. In 1932, this time equipped with diesel engines, Berlier trucks triumphed in the Trans-Saharan race. Trucks won the fight against the railways. We could transport three to four times more and at half price and port to port. World War II slowed down the growth of Berlier amidst the turmoil of the post-war period when the company was sequestered. Marius Berlier died on the 17th of May 1949, aged 83. Two months later, the factories were returned to the family. According to the wishes of his father, Paul Berlier took over the management of the company. Sur les routes et sentiers de France, le nombre des Berliers dépasse celui de toutes les autres marques réunies. Le GLR 5 cylindres est le prototype du grand routier. Infatigable à la charge, c'est l'athlète de la route. In 1955, ten years after the end of the war, the nationalized Régie Nationale des Usines Renault created Saviem, which merged the heavy goods vehicle activities with Latil and Samoa. In 1959, Saviem acquired Chausson. Le développement de l'usine de Blainville a permis à Saviem Renault d'accroître encore sa production. Les chaînes produisent une gamme de véhicules industriels de 5 à 35 tonnes. Puissance ne doit pas signifier inconfort et les cabines ont été particulièrement étudiées sur les poids lourds destinés aux travaux publics ou au transport routier. Paul Berlier, meanwhile, was somewhere else. His ambition was to build up an international presence in Africa in particular. The search for oil was in full swing in the Sahara. Equipment used at that time was unsuitable. Berlier wanted to be the first manufacturer to supply trucks suitable for use in the desert. Vous allez découvrir le plus gros camion du monde, conçu et fabriqué par Berlier, le T100, le 100 tonnes. Ce moderne Gulliver qui va rompre ses amarres pour connaître la belle aventure du voyage est un peu leur œuvre et ils en sont fiers eux aussi. The emblem of French industrial expertise, the mythical T100 firmly established the image of robustness for the Berlier brand. But ironically, it was a different truck entirely that was to make its mark on the Berlier epic in the Sahara, the GBC. Its exploits, due to its ground clearance and incredible resilience, turned it into a legend. Aujourd'hui, à 80 km de Wargla, capitale du Sahara, flambe les torchères d'Achim et Saoud, la cité du pétrole. Berlier s'est fixé un but. Tracer un itinéraire terrestre qui, en 12 jours, relie Alger à Fort Lamy sans rupture de charge. Berlier became a key brand all over the world. 
ce qui a fait ma force, c'est cette formule permanente de mon père que j'ai appliquée. Je vous crois, mais j'irai voir. Et quand vous allez voir, ça n'est jamais ce qu'on vous a dit. The manufacturer from Lyon was in full expansion. Soon, the demand for small vehicles for urban deliveries took hold. Début 1965, un robuste nouveau-né, le Stradet. This five-ton vehicle was the first truck in the world to feature air suspension, combining leaf springs and air cushions. Then came the TR300, the first large transporter to feature a tilted cab. A true symbol of comfort and safety, eight years later, its 350 Centaur version became the last truck to bear the locomotive. L'État a donc fait connaître ce matin le prix qu'il attache à la réorganisation de l'industrie automobile française. Quant à la Régie Renault, il reçoit 450 millions de francs de façon que sa vieille puisse prendre le contrôle de Berlier. En 1978, Berlier et Saviem became Renault Industrial Vehicles. One brand, one logo. En 1990, Renault Industrial Vehicles came up with a major new innovation which was recognized by the press as revolutionary. The Renault AE Magnum was successfully launched on a heavy goods vehicle market and became the benchmark for European transport. The brand then had a succession of innovations and successes. En 2001, Renault's truck division joined the Volvo Group and one year later became Renault Trucks. Renault Trucks made the decision to re-engage with the Great Berlier Expeditions and started competing again to demonstrate the robustness and efficiency of its trucks. New challenges are ahead of the brand. Not only does it have to reduce fuel consumption and CO2 emissions, it also has to develop alternative energies. The brand is a pioneer in sustainable urban transport, commercializing the Maxity Electric in 2011. In 2013, the presentation of the new Euro 6 range marked a turning point. It was the first time that a manufacturer replaced its entire range in the same year. Whatever their business, all professionals can have a robust, fuel-efficient working tool to maximize uptime and always be in control of their costs. In 2015, the Renault Trucks T, flagship of the range, was elected International Truck of the Year, a fitting reward after years of research and development. Committed to meeting the challenge of sustainable mobility, Renault Trucks continues to conduct ambitious research and develop innovative and connected services. The launch in 2018 of the second generation of 100% electric zero emission trucks in use using the official designation ZE was a practical response supporting the way cities are shifting to electric mobility. Every day, the women and men at Renault Trucks look into the future to come up with simple, efficient transport solutions and to provide professionals with the assurance that they have made the right choice thus pursuing the strategy of their founders. <laughs>